everyone, welcome to Inside Wire. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Intel NUC, Intel's next unit of computing. This specific model itself is an i5 processor, which is Intel's 10th generation processor. This small form factor PC is configurable. It comes as a bare bones unit, which means you can add any specific amount of RAM and hard drive. Both hard drive slots are configurable. One is an M2 slot, which is an SSD, which can take an SSD, sorry. Uh, the second one is a two and a half inch bay, which can either take an SSD or a HDD. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at some benchmark results and also have a look at the specification of the Intel NUC. If you were interested in having a look at how to install the RAM and hard drive, there's another video I've posted, um, which should be popping up on your screen now, or there's a link to it in the description below. So let's go on and have a look at the specification of the Intel NUC. As you can see on the front of the machine, on the left hand side there is one SD card slot. To the right hand side there are two USB ports, one Type-C Thunderbolt port, one USB 3.1. Uh, we have a headphone microphone socket and we have the power button to the unit. So on the back of the unit we have a 19 volt DC power connector, we have a HDMI 2.0 port which is capable of displaying a 4K monitor at 60 Hertz. We have a gigabit network connection, two more USB 3.1s, another USB Type-C Thunderbolt port, and an anti-theft locking device. So that's the unit on the that's the unit as a whole. Let's take a look at some of the benchmark tests. I'm using two pieces of software today to conduct my benchmark testing. One is Cinebench and the other is Nova Bench. So we're going to jump straight into one. Let's have a look at Cinebench first. Um, I'm going to quickly run this test. This is the latest version that's downloaded from their website. This is a free bit of software, so feel free to run this on your own machine just to get an idea of how it compares uh, to the Intel uh, NUC. And as you can see, that is the test complete. So I'm gonna have a look at the left-hand side here where the rankings are. Um, the Core i5 has dropped uh, down to here below the i7, which is where you would expect it to be. Um, one side note I will pop in here is I ran number eight earlier. Um, at the moment, I am running some screen recording software, so that will be bringing down the CPU speed ever so slightly. So it has dropped down to 1298, but my original test was 1685. So let's have a quick look at uh, Nova Bench then. Let's see where we, we stand with that. So again, I, I have run a, a test a little while ago to see what came up, but I'm gonna run another one just now. Um, so let's see how we get on with that. And there we have it. So it scored a 1476, which is probably not too much different um, considering where I've ran it 12 hours ago. So the reason I like Nova Bench is because you can actually go in to um, the charts and have a quick look. So um, if you didn't catch that, we click on the little view performance charts and comp comparisons. Um, it will then bring you to Nova Bench's webpage. You can feel free to log in if you want and share the results, but I wanna keep these anonymous. So we can click on here and have a look and we can see what our score was and when it was ran. So with 32 gig of RAM, we have a RAM speed of 14,625 megabytes per second. The CPU is 917 GPU score. So direct 3D is 16 frames per second. OpenCL is 229 GFLOPs. Uh, and the disk speed and uh, read and write is around 500 megabytes per second. So if we have a quick look at the performance analysis, um, we can see the CPU scores in the 49th percentile and the GPU 
as it's probably expected with an integrated onboard UHD graphics. Um, sorry, Intel's UHD graphics. Um, it's in the 37th percentile. So there are, and it gives you options for possible improvements. You can have a quick look at how to optimize some of these tools. So if we go back and have a look at the baseline comparisons, this sort of gives you an idea at a machine of what you're comparing it against. So if we went to a budget laptop, for example, um, you can see that we are well above 92% higher than what you would expect from a budget laptop. Um, CPU score 83% higher, GPU score 103%. Uh, when we start looking at a sort of mid-level gaming machine, um, these aren't really designed for gaming, but you can see that it just, it drops down a little bit in terms of score. The GPU score, yes, massively it does, but the CPU score is not, not too bad. Um, a high-end gaming machine, uh, it drops down considerably. And if we look at a high-end iMac, um, it again, it drops around a similar sort of score. So these are the two tools that um, I like to use for uh, benchmarking. I hope they were useful. Um, if you have any other tools that you would like me to run, please feel free to leave me a comment in the section below. So just to show you guys what we ran yesterday, um, I'm gonna compare these two results. Um, and you can see, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there is some screen recording software running in the background, but there isn't too much difference in the scores. So you can see um, the dark blue being the one that we ran yesterday and the, the light blue being the one that we ran this morning. So um, you can see on the comparison chart, there isn't too much difference, which is great. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you've liked it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really feel this machine is going to be ideal for anywhere from a retail environment to a home office or even an office space. If you have any questions about this product, leave me, a qu leave me some comments in the section below and I'll see you in the next one.